Welcome to Stand. I'm your host, Kelly Chewbacca. We're so happy to have you today. This is a show where we help make courage contagious. I am a former U.S. Senate candidate in Alaska and the current chair of Trump's campaign. And I'm joined today by my amazing co-host, Denali Chewbacca, who also happens to be my daughter, oldest and potentially favorite. I know other people will be watching the show, so I have to be careful. We're so excited to have you. You can be one of our standouts by going to standshow.org. That's where you can follow us on our social media channels and catch all of our former episodes on YouTube. But today we are so excited to jump into some amazing topics happening up here in Alaska that could also affect elections across the country. So we are going to talk about something on our ballot, the topic of Denali. Rank choice voting. Do we keep it or throw it out? Rank choice voting. For those who don't know what that is, we've got the person who is championing the overthrow of rank choice voting with us today. Miss Michaela, we are so happy to have you on the show. Michaela is the chair of Yes on Two. Michaela, thanks so much for being with us today. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be with you. At the beginning, let's talk about what rank choice voting is for people who don't know. And our audience that is outside of Alaska or people in Alaska who are like, I'm not quite sure how this whole thing works. What is ranked choice voting and what's the history of how it made it up here in Alaska? Well, ranked choice voting is a new system that was just introduced to Alaska about four years ago. It's a system where you are supposed to rank the candidates in order of preference, and it eliminates the one choice, one candidate vote. It has been a very confusing, complicated system. It gives greater control to dark money. And it's an emerging threat to our democracy as we are seeing things play out in our experiences here in Alaska. So it was actually brought to Alaska um, four years ago by these outside interest groups like Fair Vote, Unite America, the 1630 Fund, and uh, seeking to re-engineer our election system. It was also designed um, by um, a guy named Scott Kendall, who we call the father of ranked choice voting here in Alaska. He was Senator Murkowski's former in-house counsel. And um, he brought this system up partly uh, to get around the primary system because it wasn't looking like she was gonna win the election. And it was um, as exposed by Project Veritas and by uh, Murkowski staffers that it was to keep her in power. Yeah, that's right. We are well too familiar with that because of what happened in our 2022 race. We saw the dark underbelly that Senator Murkowski wasn't actually the popular support in a traditional voting system where everyone knows who the clear winner is. And the only way that they could cobble together victory was by re-engineering the entire election system so that it was confusing for the voters Uh, This system works by actually reallocating votes as the as the system progresses. And the Division of Elections has testified before our state legislature that they are not actually able to audit the results of the election. And so if you don't get your first place selection uh, up in the top two, your vote gets eliminated or your ballot is exhausted. And then if you happen to vote for a second or third place candidate, that vote gets reallocated to above. And often the second or third place candidate will rise above and become the first place candidate, supposedly representing a broader proportion of the voters. But most of the time, the studies have shown that the person who ends up winning does not represent more than 50 percent of the votes that originally were represented in round one. And so that's ranked choice voting. But up here, we also have with it a jungle primary which means it's anyone can run no matter what in our primary and the the parties, whether it's Republican, Democrat, the Libertarian Party, Alaska Independence Party, Constitution Party, Green Party, they no longer get to screen, vet, and clear their candidates. Michaela, what has that resulted in this crazy primary process in Alaska? What have we seen, not in theory, but in practice as a result in Alaska? You know, there are so many horror stories that have come out of this terrible experiment. It's been an absolute disaster. Every angle you look at it. Um, one of the, some of the most glaring issues that I've seen is that parties are no longer able to properly vet their candidates. You know, typically, you know, you look at the independents, the Republican, Democrat, Green Party, it's the cream that rises to the top in their category, so to speak. So. 
back in 2022 during the U.S. Senate race, as you well know, there was a lady from Hollywood. She was a California actress who threw her hat into the ring and uh, it was unnoticed, um, unnoticed uh, that, you know, she's actually from out of state. So she even got a short-term lease at an Airbnb in Juneau and ran. She was heavily funded by outside money. Uh, she was in all the parades, uh, went door to door. And this didn't really come out until um, toward the end of the campaign uh, season in the primary where it was exposed. And this is just opening the lid on the can of worms. You know, even this year, we're seeing a New York felon that's on the ballot uh, running for Congress. He made the top four. He's never been an Alaska resident. I don't even think he's ever been to Alaska. He has a South Dakota address, you know, tied to a warehouse and he's in, in prison or in jail until the year 2038. And so folks are realizing they can game the system. You know, what is keeping, what are this, this the safeguards that we've had in place mm through the parties are no longer there. They're no longer applicable because we've got inmates, we've got California ad, um, actresses running. You know, what's there to keep Russian spies from running in our campaigns? It just, it, it's a, just a terrible system that opens the door wide open to fraud and corruption and makes our elections um, very vulnerable to exploitation and tampering. Yeah, 100%. Michaela, let's talk a little bit more about how the jungle primaries are leaving our election system open to weakness and vulnerabilities. We've seen a lot of stuff coming from No One Two talking about how RCV is actually protecting the election system. It's restoring veterans' rights. It's making sure that independents and undeclareds can vote for who they want to vote for. And you and I and Kelly, both we, we all know that the election system actually allowed all of that before, but can you explain a little bit more what No One Two was saying about that and just why it's so incorrect? Sure. So the ads that our, our opposition No One Two is running right now is that they're saying that political elites, which is Alaskan grassroots, are trying to force veterans to join a party just to vote in a primary. We know that's not true. That has never been uh, true of our state. We believe that everybody should vote in our primary. In fact, the language on ballot measure two just simply returns our voting system back to the way things originally were. You know, without the jungle primary, without, um, you know, with the proper vetting of candidates where the cream rises to the top. Um, but, you know, this, what they're saying is just such a blatant lie because the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, in their party platform say that independents, undeclared, nonpartisans can vote in their, their primary. You know, this is just to safeguard Democrats, Republicans from gaming the system, as we are seeing. Um, and it's just to, uh, yeah, just to have those safeguards in place. So right now, without the vetting of candidates, it really makes it's so dangerous to our democracy that we can have felons and actresses on the ballot. Um, very dangerous. So we've got to eliminate that jungle primary and go back to a system that is simple, transparent, and easy to understand. And one in which we've always had independents and undeclareds able to vote in the traditional party primaries. Right. If you look at both Democrats and Republicans um, you know, their mission statements and stuff online for Alaska, none of them have anything about unaffiliated people not being able to vote. It's specifically just that Democrats cannot vote in Republican primaries and Republicans cannot vote in Democrat primaries. That's well, it. Something else that's concerned me, and we can pick this up after the break, but I know you and I've talked about it as someone who represents the younger generation of voters. There's a lot of people who don't want to fit into the strict Republican and Democrat parties anymore. They're looking for alternate candidates. You know, like we would see RFK Jr. Mm -hmm. running as a, someone who's kind of representing an out of the box candidate this year. And our parties maybe aren't representing all of the people. And so before in Alaska, because we're a little bit of a 
slightly libertarian society across the board, right? And before in Alaska, it really wouldn't matter what category you're looking at, president and vice president or Congress or in our state House and Senate races, you would see candidates from the Republican and Democrat Party, from our Alaska Independent Party, which is a, a unique party here in our state, the Constitution Party, the Green Party, Libertarians, et cetera. And you'd have a, a broad selection of candidates that you could pick from. Now, because of the way that this jungle primary and ranked choice voting system works, they don't even show up in the top four. Anymore, that's right. You only people drop out. You only get four candidates at the top. And what we've noticed in these last couple cycles is those four slots are dominated oh, yeah. by the, the traditional parties, by Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. And the only way I've seen an alternate party get through to the top four is if a traditional party candidate drops, drops out. out. And so there's this lie that, you know, this makes it so that so many different people can run and, and get elected, but the, and they can, they just won't show up as an option in the final in the top, in the top four. Yeah. So in Alaska, we've got, you know, this concept of a mudroom. I know that that's not common in a lot of the lower 48, but we've got so much mud and dirt and sludge that we have pretty large mud rooms before you're allowed to come in the house because we've got to take off all our gear. And it's like, it's turned our election system into a giant mud room where it's pretty crazy and it's pretty muddy, but the only people actually allowed into the political process of the house of representatives or the state house in Juneau, the Capitol is just your top four. And those tend to be heavily funded, often dark money funded mm -hmm. incumbent candidates. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. And so we'll pick that up on the other side of the break and other things that are problematic about this process. Cause I know a lot of States across the country are considering this ranked choice voting debacle. And we in Alaska aren't experimenting with it. We've already done it. You're on stand with Kelly and Denali Chewbacca. Stand by. Gene's Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram Trucks. Providing the cars, trucks, and SUVs that keep us working, keep us playing, keep us moving forward. And for over 75 years, Gene's has been helping keep us connected. Gene's Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram, the official dealership of life in Alaska. Together, we are strong. In Fairbanks and online at jeanschrysler.com. At Holquist Homes, they believe in providing the highest level of quality at the lowest possible price. Over 40 years and 4,000 homes later, value and pride continue to be the core of their philosophy while building for Alaskan families. They currently have a variety of new developments in South Anchorage, Upper and Lower Hillside, and Eagle River. At Holquist Homes, they value the satisfaction of their buyers by building homes that their buyers are proud to own. Holquist Homes.